Ah, wow. The normal rec center with no weekly shop, no retcon stuff, it's just the rec center. It's just like breathing a breath of fresh air, honestly. And as you guys can see on the sign, it even says, thank you for joining us at RecCon. That's pretty much all the changes here. But of course, welcome back to another video. Of course, I have news, update, a new update just dropped, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I will be covering in today's video. So of course, stay tuned. To get the update out of the way, that's right, we're hopping straight into this. We got, got in the fully functioning edition, and we have this TLDR to read. You can now customize your reactions from your profile page. Functions. You can now check out all the new chips that you can use inside the functions below. They fixed holster placement issues in VR and the handshake interaction between VR and other platforms. And lastly, they optimize your message in Rec Room Studio with the click of a button using Pro Builder optimization. For avatars, they say your avatar shoes just got an update. We added feet data. Don't make it weird. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> fixed a bug that added nose and eyebrows to saved outfits when loading in Modern Bean, and lastly, fixed a bug where the watch would disappear when switching body types. Then for this functions tab, it says function call nodes can now be used in inventions. They fixed a bug where functions could end up in a bad state after deleting one of their output ports, and they should now function correctly. But okay, that was that was done. <laughs> the following chips are now usable inside of functions. As you guys can see, I'm not going to read them out just for time's sake. And for rooms 2.0, they added local player set local motion VFX enabled. This new chip allows you to disable various feedback effects in rooms 2.0, so you can clearly replace them with custom effects. If there's fixes with the hierarchy view, gamepads are are now able to recognize hierarchy and you can now scroll through hierarchy view on touch platforms. You can now undo the edit out and move selected operations, fix the bug where the select entire invention button in the options menu which could result in invalid selections, and lastly the make invention option in the maker pen options menu will now appear even if you have a part of another invention selected. For general improvements and bug fixes, we got a lot so lock in here. Now for the first patch note instead of general improvements and bug fixes, it says take your reaction to the next level with the basic customization on your profile page and I don't really get this patch note. I spent a few minutes looking to see what this patch note could be, and it seems like everybody else is also kind of confused. I'll have to make a short coming back to that one, but I guess that's a cool update. <laughs> Anyways, they fixed an issue where in VR, if you physically moved or rotated yourself in your play area, the hip equip slots would become incorrectly placed. This issue is prominent in Rec Royale. Now you should be able to catch Ws without fumbling through your weapons. Thank God. Honestly, that's so that's such a hassle for me. But anyways, they adjusted the hip slots volume placement with VR, so when the player goes into crouch and prone to reduce false positives. We heard your feedback that the new default shirt before costumes was causing clipping issues. Now when you equip a costume that hides torso items, you'll see the old default shirt again. They improved the screens to VR handshake interactions, so screen players' interactions with VR players, for example. The prompt for accepting a handshake for the VR player has changed to add friend to extend hand, so the VR player could complete the interaction. The progress bar around the prompt was removed since it only requires a tap. For handshake offers started this way, the screen player's gesture will return to neutral after a completed handshake. Faster load times for the maker pen, object highlights slash outlines on mobile are now scaled correctly for iOS, Android, and Quest, fix certain grid list of room cards having missing rows, clean up UI hydration for controller users, fix visibility on some advanced microphone settings to match platform capabilities, fixed incorrect sizing on the play search page, blah, blah, blah. fix the bug where some players with a lot of saved outfits weren't able to log in, they also changed the default t-shirt for new users to the untucked T, and lastly, they had storefront boot performance optimization. Now for Rec Room Studio, all they had to say was a new component called Pro Builder Optimization can now be used to save memory when using Pro Builder by creating an optimized Unity message for runtime. If you add the component to your existing Pro Builder mesh objects, you can use the optimize button in the expector to create an optimized mesh. If you need to edit the mesh again with Pro Builder, the edit button restores the original Pro Builder mesh component. That was it. That was the entire patch note for Rec Room Studio. Then for our experiments, the best part of the update, they go on to say that they're starting an experiment for a new title screen landing page that will affect some players. This will give players the ability to join friends that are already online in public rooms from the title screen. And lastly, starting an experiment for party size warnings when traveling to a room too small for the size of your party. No bean or full body avatar left behind. Now that was this entire update, and of course, let's talk about some of the features that came with this update. So if you go to your settings inside this update, you'll have a pretty good chance that you'll see new stuff inside your experience tab. You can now choose who you can receive DMs from, either it being your friends, favorites, or no one. And they also added a group chat option, which allows you to only be added to group chats by your friends, favorites, or no one. I'm keeping that one on no one. Now, these were the most notable from the update, but if you guys go to audio, I didn't cover this before, but you guys can actually see advanced microphones.
microphone settings now. If you go to them, you'll realize that there's now background noise reduction, and this has been in the game for like a little while now, but I barely caught it recently. And same with echo look cancellation, and you can use your system microphone or enable music mode. This is like for if you're playing music and stuff like that, I'm guessing it just gets rid of all the pitches on your voice, I guess? Continuing on with messaging inside of Rec Room, we actually got a little announcement announcing the new settings and stuff. With the new direct message settings, you can now choose who can talk to you and who can talk to the hand. Learn more about it and find new settings in your experience tab on your watch now. So they essentially have this new little article talking about new direct message settings. It goes into this update and of course I'm gonna read it out but I'll have a timestamp if you guys want to skip out on this portion of the video. Anyways, you can control who messages you. Their mission at Rec Room is to create a fun and welcoming place for people from all walks of life. That's an easy thing to say and a much harder thing to do. But it's one of the most important things you work on in Rec Room because the magic of Rec Room is hanging out with friends old and new. And you know, we think our community is pretty darn special and we're very proud to have you and all of our fun and kind and kooky rec roomers in our community. But just because we think you're all great doesn't mean you have to agree with us. You should have control over who you engage with and how you engage with them. Just like you choose which rooms you want to hang out with and who you want to hang out with in. Just like how you choose the rooms you want to actually hang out in and who to hang out with. What makes a great social experience is what works for you. So today we're launching a new player chat settings that will give you more control over who can directly message you. If you like seeing a full DM inbox, you can keep your preferences to all friends, but if you're an empty inbox type of person, you can choose to completely turn off DMs or pick the middle ground and choose to receive DMs from favorites only. They also add a new warning, so if you try to DM a player who has DMs disabled, you'll see this message. This player has their DMs disabled, try chatting with them over voice instead. If you have your DMs disabled, you'll see this message when viewing DM threads. You can't DM this player and they can't DM you because of your preferences. It'll even give you a settings button, and if you want to change your settings at any time, you can find them in the experience settings page on your watch. These settings apply to player to player DMs and group DMs. So we've heard from our popular creators and video partners that group chats have gotten a bit wild, so these settings also apply to who can add you to new group chats, friends, favorites, or no one. And party chat will stay the same as social features in the room or party you're hanging in. And of course, your existing player settings will continue to be respected, so blocked and banned players still won't be able to message you, and we're always looking for ways to improve your experience inside of Rec Room. We hope this is a useful change that puts you in control and hit us up with ideas if you got a burning request to make to Rec Room even more fun and welcoming and keep giving it your Rec Room best. And so what do you think about that? That was pretty much their entire little article talking about the new direct message settings. I personally love them because you guys add me to too many group chats. It's okay though, because sometimes they're funny and, some, and sometimes they're just not. Now I wouldn't consider that stuff our biggest part of our update for this video because I got something special coming up. Jode Animation, a Rec Room developer, made a quick video showing a peek or a look of where the updates to slides and teleports are at for players. He happens to be in full body avatar inside this video, but the movement would be the same for both avatar types, and essentially this makes it so the head and torso are in the same position as the classic slide, and so standing VR mode slide is consistent with classic slide on all avatars. Take a look and share your thoughts. Anyways, he made a own video and I'll let that roll now. Okay, so here's a peek at the new slide animation. This is in standing VR, what it looks like when you slide. So we don't lower the height, you just do a slice in place. And then let's take a look at the normal, what we'd call screens mode. So on PC or mobile, when you're sliding, we do the normal thing where we lower you so the torso will be touching the ground while you slide. And then the last thing I wanted to take a look at was teleport. So for those of you that love teleport, here we've fixed the weird animation issue that was in there. So what do you think? Be sure to let me know your guys' thoughts and uh, yeah. And of course I have more full body avatar news, but this part of the video is sort of like a dev Q&A if you will. Essentially, community members inside the Requiem Discord server ask developers about questions that they have about future features, and sometimes developers actually answer those questions. It gives us insights to new updates, news, etc, and of course that's kind of why I'm talking about it in the first place. So anyways, when this Requiem developer was asked if they'll be able to add colliders to legs, kind of like a fighting game with more variations for moves, Jode Animation says that, oh, that's an interesting idea, and they do have colliders on legs, which is why we get hit in paintball. What they don't have is a way for creators to actually animate the leg, so if you wanted to make a game with kicking moves, then that wouldn't really work, and they'll file that away as they plan for future features. And when asked if they're going to get more eyebrows, the Jode Animation does confirm that eventually they'd like to have more options for facial expression doodles we call face sprites. Right now, they don't have a way to add to the system without making memory usage worse though, so it ultimately leads to a higher crash rate. Eventually, they'll carve out time to refactor that system and hopefully fully open for more options. Also, when asked if there can be a feature where custom 
shirts can be long sleeved, Joan Animation says that we'd like to have more items in the category we internally call paintables. Yes, we'd also ideally like to improve the in-app painting process, so feel free to drop any requests. And now enough with this full body avatar news, let's talk about upgraded bean body avatars for a sec. Players have noticed that the upgraded bean is definitely different than the OG bean. For example, with this player, which is actually ER, a YouTuber slash TikToker, on the OG bean, his glasses are able to collide with his mustache, but on the upgraded bean, they're not able to collide at all. He was basically asking if there was any plan to make the upgraded bean look like the OG bean again, and this is what Joad Animation had to say. Yes, we want to address that issue, facial feature ranges influencing each other too much, so that you can achieve the look you previously had. Thanks for continuing to call this out, appreciate it. They're writing up a little bit more of a response to all of this helpful feedback to share here in a few minutes. This news is pretty old now that I'm noticing I should have came to this like a few weeks ago, but anyways. Max Powers, another Requiem developer, had said, Thanks for all the feedback and responses. We, the Avatar team, are listening to all of this as we plan for the next steps. These things are currently high priority for one of our senior Avatar devs to address. The unintentional adding of nose slash brows to your saved outfits, the change of the default shirt worn around the costumes, and both of these things were not intended, and we apologize for the bugs. We'll get a fix out ASAP. Next on their list of fixed things are like zoomed out earring thumbnails, the weird bobbing during the teleport, missing team wristbands and paintball, and some odd behavior while seated in some situations. Beyond that, they're evaluating options that as we really approach and we want to take in the improving embodiment and consider animation feedback. We appreciate your participation in making our avatars awesome. And more recently, ER had actually asked if this update will happen before original bean avatars get removed, and Joad Animation confirms that they're working with that in mind, currently figuring out how soon they can get an update out. He goes on to say that there will likely be a beat of time where upgraded bean is fully rolled out and the classic bean is still available before they deprecate it. During the transition, there will be a point where new items are released for upgraded beans only, but your full inventory up to that point will still be available on classic bean. And it's already been confirmed that it's not going to be later this week or anything like that, but they'll try their hardest to get it out as fast as they can. You know, honestly, every single time I make a channel membership bit in my video, it gets harder and harder to try and make my, you know, popping out as weird and funny and, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what we got today. Anyways, if you don't know already, my channel memberships are just like a little subscription thing. Basically, you give me money every month and I give you perks every month like shoutouts to my videos and sneak peeks to my videos. There's a bunch more. But of course, join the family and let's read out these people. Of course, massive shoutouts to all these people and we have Jack Tutorial. Now, by the way, Jack Tutorial, I notice you're coming up to the top of the list every time. I see you, buddy. I see you. I know what you're doing. You're smart, by the way, but I'm not going to update my, my channel membership image anyways. We have Reed Reed, Not the Pub, The Dragon Boy, Gasly, Garlic Bread, It's Freddy R, R, Dojo Bleed, Cat, BBB, Burning Owl, Yo, Chiki, Raphael, Cloud, Netflix, X9, and of course, Box David. And of course, my Squidlings too. Appreciate it lots. You guys go towards my Starbucks fun, so, you know, love to see it. Anyways, back to the video. And yeah, that's pretty much the entire news update video that I have today. Of course, before I end up the video though, I do just want to say that if you weren't there for Creators Gala, I had one best Rectuber. I just want to say, Bitter Bear brought up a good point, but all the votes for this Creators Gala was kind of private and it wasn't really the whole entire community considering the actual voting process wasn't actually like fully public. So of course, who knows what would have happened or who knows who would have won if, you know, it was public. But nonetheless, I appreciate all the votes and all the support and thank you so much. I just want to say there's a bunch of great nominees that were placed for the best <laughs> Rectuber and honestly, I don't think there's a best Rectuber unless we're talking like editing and that's like Willmeister. Willmeister is crazy. But anyways, that's my little spiel. And uh, subscribe, like, do all that crazy stuff. Use my code. I, I haven't said that this entire video. Any anyways, bye. Wait, also, before I go, um, I'm still waiting to get the trophy in my Maker Pin palette. If any developers watching this, please help. <laughs>